hello welcome to another Friday artwork video so we're up to rivals of Ixalan and as usual I'm going through these in rarity order we're starting off with higher rarity cards basically all the higher rarity cards the, the rares the mythic rares that I pulled out of boosters obviously I've removed any duplicates I think there was one duplicate and then I'll move on to the lower rarities I think I'm going to chat through on this video. A number of people have commented with these sorts of artwork videos that they do like me to, to chat through some of the stuff here. I've got my pointer here so I can point out some stuff. Um, and let's have a, a look through here. So we've got some strange mist going on here. Oh yeah, good. I did pull at least one elder dinosaur. There's a lot of cards in this set and the previous set where the colours are like super vivid. A lot of these dinosaurs have very like vivid crests on them. Okay, so yeah, this is nice on camera because it's a little bit clearer with this card. Um, it's one of these cards where there's a lot of real detail that you don't always pick up on when you're just playing the card. I was lucky enough to pull at least one legendary planeswalker so we get to see how they you know with these I think I mentioned it before with the I think it was with the planeswalkers and I, I correct me if I'm wrong here but they were the first of the cards where they extended the artwork just beyond the borders obviously with Eldrazi it went way beyond but with these you know it was that sort of tipping over into the into the border itself another one when you're on camera you definitely get a bit more appreciation of the depth here of the artwork So I mustn't forget about these because <laughs> um, sometimes I tend to do this. So this is one of the transform cards. So let's see what's on the other side. These were all, if you remember, legendary lands on the other side. Another one. 
it's interesting we don't always talk much about the the rules text on on here but uh, it might be pertinent to the image so to me that reminds me of uh, Bird of Paradise in some ways well it's interesting that the you can see on there it says tap add one mana of any color to your mana pool That's cool. Hopefully this is looking as good on my monitor when I'm filming this, the uh, the camera screen, as it is on the big screen. That looks pretty cool. I've also slightly adjusted the lighting here. I've got the light coming in from from the top. And... Um, quite close and bright so so let me know if you find this an improvement to what I've been doing before where I've been lighting more from the side and not quite so close so on to our lower rarities now oh yeah that's much clearer Yeah, this one I was curious about seeing on the big screen, or potentially to see it on a big screen. I wanted to see what was, you know, going down on here, going on down here, to say, and maybe a bit more of the detail around, around this. Oh yeah, I can see now it's steps all the way down. I was having a bit of trouble selecting a, an uncommon black card to feature because actually I didn't seem to pull that many uncommons in black. So it's funny how with the, the uncommons, uh, when you go through, say, you know, you've opened eight to ten packs, you still get these weird clumps of, of things where it's maybe one colour over the other, um, you know, they're slightly better present. And particularly at the, the higher rarities. Uh, at a common it all seems to even itself out. And uh, you, you'll, I think you'll know, to know that, and, and one of the reasons why I used to use the grid back in the day was I'm fascinated by that concept of as fan, you know, where you, as you fan the cards out, what things bounce out at you, depending on like how many packs you, you open. And that's obviously related to what types of themes, mechanics, abilities appear at the various rarities and how many packs you open. So we've got a couple of dinosaur cards coming up, this one. And the next one, which I wanted to see what they look like close up. The reds and the blues are really popping nicely in here. 
Also let me know how you're finding this new sort of green background generally, whether it helps with the sort of, uh, whether I'm going through, you know, the artwork from a set or whether I'm using, notice I'm using it in, uh, in the deck. I'll flip through this as well, particularly where I don't have sleeves on the card or the sleeves are colourless. I was curious because I wanted to see with a dinosaur themed deck where they'd reprinted Naturalize how they were effectively destroying target artifacts or enchantments and you can sort of see a broken cut cutlass here uh, underneath the dinosaur's foot which I thought was a nice touch. A lot of the merfolk artwork, the uh, again very vivid, lots of reds and blues. How could we not have an elemental? So we're moving on to the two colour stuff. Didn't pull much, many two colour uncommons. And if you remember around this time, both before and after this set, those became slots for draft indicators, you know, archetype indicators. I think the problem was I remember that maybe it was the raging Regisaur. Uh, maybe that was the one where I actually ended up pulling multiple copies of this. One, it was one of the two dinosaurs, two colours. Okay. Always interesting with walls to see what the wall is made out of. So. A bit easier to see the harness actually on the dinosaur. Okay, so yeah, I was curious about the reprint of Traveller's Amulet because I always tend to focus in on this part of the artwork. But you can see some interesting stuff going on here. I'm not sure if these are supposed to be some sort of beacon. Maybe. Oh, good old Evolving Worlds. So I really liked how they, for quite a while now, they got into this habit of using different artwork for Evolving Worlds. And this was kind of becoming their sort of go-to uh, tap land for, you know, sacking and searching out basic land cards. Or, it, well, it puts the card that you've searched actually into the battlefield tapped. And then we've got just a couple of the actual tap lands. That's nice. And then and that with the woodland stream. And there we go. So thanks once again for watching, bye for now, and I will catch you in the next episode.